god, he thinks he's so gangster. What up, G? This is the beast, huh? This is it. Well, it's coming to its end. It is. It's been the beast. I've loved it. Cool. Actually, I'll turn it off. Turn it off. Can't afford to leave that V8, right? V8, so big 7... 740, 750? This one is the 740. Um, and this is the one that I got 90% off. 90% bargain. It, it, um, and it's a Minter. The, something I just want to say for a lot of the um, international viewers. In Australia, we have this wonderful thing called luxury car tax. And basically what the government does is they put 35% on any nice car. So when this was new, this was $200,000. It was over $200,000 plus any options and on-road costs, which is just ridiculous. In 2008. 2008. That was enough to buy a house. Well, nearly. A shit house. Your house. My, well, a tent. So. Um, but, you know, they were quite a lot of money. Uh, I picked this up for $20,000. And it has only done 80,000, it had only done 80,000 K. So it's a, it's a friggin' deal. And, okay, yes, it's not the current gen 7 series, but man, it's still a really, really nice car. Um, and I really liked it. There's there's a lot of hype online about these being a bit unreliable, and this one's been pretty good. How, how, how good? Pretty good. So, in the 12 months I've had this, um, this has been sort of my daily between this and them again. Um, I've done 7,000 Ks in it, and I've done a water pump. Okay, that's it. I've done a water pump. I did do a few other things like services, spark plugs, but I didn't need to do them. It was just preventative maintenance. Yeah, so in, I'm gonna add it up and we'll put a little infographic, but I said it's around $1,000. That's all I spent on this. That's nothing. No. For, for what's considered one of the worst reliable cars on the internet. Well, yeah, it's funny. The um, There's so much fear mongering about owning a 7 Series because of all the technology inside them. And uh, this one's been really good. And all the work you did, you just did it yourself? Yeah. Nothing's overly complicated? The, the internet is a brilliant place for learning how to do things. Um, one thing that is a big advantage is getting a good scan tool. Um, yeah, so being able to actually read codes if anything does come up with any late model BMW is really good. Yeah, I guess that helps to know, what, know what's gone wrong or what's died. Yeah. I've got to say that that rear door is colossal, so it is a proper long wheelbase one. Yeah, this is the LI. Um, it's so big. Look at it. You could... But but some people in there. could have sex in the back. I'd, I'd never have. No one will have sex with me, but... Um, no, it is a really, really spacious car. Rear sunshades. Actually, we'll go through the features in, in a moment. Um, but I just want to talk about why I got the 7 Series. So when... Uh, oh God, actually I replaced my X5 with this. This was really the X5 replacement. Something that if I was doing a long trip, it was nice to be in. Um, and just a nice luxury car. Where the Megan, although I did... Well, God, it was really, really 50-50 between this and the Megane, but the Megane is like, it's your, it's the race car, it's an invigorating drive, where this is the polar opposite. You can relax and do 10 hours on this thing, that's really nice to drive. I would expect this to be a lot more luxurious than the Megane, but is it, I mean, compared to your X5 or compared to my 5 Series, is it, is it next level? Yeah, yeah, it really is. The, uh, well, actually, funnily, with the X5, so my X5 was a 2004, so it was four years older than this, but it had the N62, so pretty much the same architectural engine. This is the N62 TU, the update. I think they call it TU. Um, but pretty much the same engine and pretty much the same gearbox. However, this is definitely programmed differently. It's got the ZF6 speed gearbox and it's ridiculously smooth. Let's have a quick look under the bonnet. Yeah, show us. It's a V8. It's a huge land boat of a car, isn't it? I think Hoovy would call it a land yacht. A land yacht, there you go. Hey, speaking of Hoovy, he was one of the guys that sort of made me a bit nervous about these. They're, um, because he bought one, oh, well, three or four years ago, I think. And he said about all the problems he had with the timing chains and that sort of stuff. But reading online, not that many people have those problems. Like, it's, considering how many of these are out there, especially this engine in America and how many vehicles it was in, they're not bad. They do have a few little common issues, like I've read about PCV valves, and I did those on my X5. Um, but they were like $16 for new ones from China. Um, yeah. So eight, only 80,000 Ks, this is all 
I know that the cooling systems, like my 5 Series, they're pretty bad in these. Has, has this gone yet? Or Well, like I said, that, that I did the water pump, but that was when I was doing the first service and I could just feel a little bit of play in the water pump pulley. So nothing serious, but I thought we'll just do it while we're in there. I think the water pump was around $200, so it's not mega money. I think I spent nearly as much on coolant and flushing all the coolant out. Ah! I did replace the overflow bottle. Um, yeah, it developed a crack. I'm, I'm gonna let it off, it's plastic, it's not gonna last forever. Um, and it did start weeping out of one of the seams. But aside from that, it's touch touch wood. Not that this, actually it's got wood inside, but no, it's been really, really good. I'm sort of sad to see it go. I don't want to get rid of it because it is, like, when you're on a, I may be single, when you're on a, a Tinder date, rocking up in one of these really does sort of paint a picture of sophistication, which oh, yeah. Especially is very you, helpful you, for me. When you're cranking your Storm Z as well. Oh, that's nice. I really like it. Um, should we go over some features? Because what do you get when you're getting 90% off retail price And this day and age? Is it still cool? Can we 0 to 60 at 2? Yes. We've got to see how fast it is. A big V8. Can't be too bad. No, this is the 4 litre, so it's not the it's not the top of the range V8. Now these you could get in... So this is the update E66. Um, this is the entry level engine. It's the 4 litre. You could get it with a 5... Well, actually a 4.8 litre. Or if you were really rich, you'd get the V12. But they were like another hundred thousand dollars to get the 760 which is just all right um let's go over some features come around this way come around this way there's something amazing that i i didn't like when i first saw them and i know they've gone on to use them in the new 7 series the gear selector come here, come here. it's here that's how you choose your gears which is awfully weird at first because i'm a traditional person i like my t-bar autos um but after you spend about five minutes with this being able to shift between reverse neutral in car parks it's really really good okay so let's start where should we start it's got a lot of features i'd imagine everything electric what are you got, you got windows and those, some of the sun shades are all electric as well yeah they are all the the very rear sunshade and then the two sunshades in each rear door it has two sunshades are electric. It doesn't actually look like it's blocking much sun through the camera, but I can assure you in person it, it does. Yeah, well, it's it's enough that I never bothered about window tint. And when you live in Queensland, you normally tint everything. Um, but having those shades at the back, I just leave them up all the time. Never bother tinting it. Um, hop in, hop in, and we'll talk through the electrical features of the car. I like that. The door doesn't have a. The door doesn't have a. Oh yeah, that's something that no, strap no one on the internet had told me about. Instead of your normal like two location check strap, which is up here and clicks, they use these rams. And so when you're in a car park and you're quite tight next to someone, wherever you let go of the door, it stays. That's awesome. Yeah. Even with my my little E39, which is tiny compared to this thing, the 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 notch on the door is just where the garage wall is so you you pull it out and it, nearly every day it goes boom and sucks into the garage door <laughs> right so seven series they always have their own special key um this is the i actually got three keys with this car so it was 90 percent off and still got all three of the keys uh i use the the mankiest one because i don't want to damage the good ones these are quite expensive um but they are keyless so you don't actually need to put the key in the ignition it will start up without. Um, I'll get you to shut that door because you probably you'll hear me a bit better once it finishes beeping. I'm going to just put the key in there so I don't lose it. So this is a 2008, but basically this car was come out in 2000, late 2001, 2002. So this chassis was the first one to have BMW's iDrive, and I have to say it's not ideal in this car. So unlike the E60 iDrive and the E90 iDrives that I've played with before, this system actually works a little bit differently. Um, it's still got your normal iDrive knob. I'll just get you to show the lovely viewers. So it's got your normal iDrive knob, um, but unlike the other E60 and E90 versions, when you want to get into a menu, so say I want to go into entertainment, to move around here, so on the E60 version, if you want to go from being selected on the left side to this side, you would move the knob to the right, like this. However, on this version, what, whenever you move the knob side to side or forwards or back, it just goes to whatever that relates to on the main menu. So it's really sort of counterintuitive. And I think this is why a lot of people 
disliked the early iDrives. If they were playing with it in a 7 Series, it's a bit cancer. I was going to say, everyone always bitches about the iDrive, but in the E60s and E90s, like, it's fine. It's not hard to use or time consuming. Well, no, what sucks about this is to get anywhere, you just have to keep rotating the knob. And it's just so that's the really only... weird, yeah. So you can't even go from that menu to that menu? No, you have to go all the way to the bottom of this menu, and then it'll start coming up from the bottom of the net. It's just silly. Anyway, not a huge fan of the iDrive in this system, but it does sort of work. One of the really bad things with this generation BMW, so this was a $200,000 car in 2008, and it doesn't have Bluetooth audio. Hmm. It's insane that BMW didn't put Bluetooth audio in. Um, I'm pretty sure this one's got MP3, but who the hell uses MP3s anymore? What I've ended up doing to actually get audio in, actually I'll turn the stereo down because it'll make a noise when I unplug this. I went for a very expensive Bluetooth modulator. Oh, That's yeah. literally the only way I can get audio from my phone wirelessly into the unit. It does have aux in, but who's got time for cables? No. That's uh, huge in the console, hey? That is massive. It is. It's a bit of a um, centerpiece to the vehicle. Uh, it is it is huge, it doesn't move. You do have your two compartments for a fixed mobile phone if you were really old and had a Nokia 5110 cool, or something. there too. Yeah, it is a, it is a cooled... Well, I assume it's it's cool. Who knows? So you it is cooled. It is cooled. <laughs> it's got the on and off button for the cooling down there. So you can keep your Twix in there. You, you could keep a Twix in there or an FM modulator to keep it cool. Function-wise, uh, the car's obviously got full climate control. Something about this climate control, it's quiet. Have you ever noticed that? Um, you haven't been in this car much, have you? No. So that's actually blowing a lot of air but it's not making a lot of noise. Mm. Like it, it, the amount of air coming through the whole dash, and it does the whole split thing between the top, middle, and floor. Um, quite often I just set it to auto. Like it's a warm day right now, and that's as much air as you need blowing. I'm gonna turn it right off for the camera though. Um, do like the climate control system, it works really, really well. The vents work good. Uh, controls on this car are good but the paddles drive me insane. So this was an early sort of Steptronic system. Uh, so it has got the ZF six speed, but, and it's got gear selection buttons, but even just talking about them makes me feel awkward. So you've got a button on the front and a button on the back. Oh yeah. yeah. You see that there? Yeah. But. So that's your paddles. It is, yeah. And it, the ones at the back, oh, I can't even remember. I, you just can't use them. Oh, you've got to put it in manual mode first, which is this little button here. So if you want to shift manually, you go into that sport and that's manual mode. Then you can use the paddles. And the one at the back shifts up and that one shifts down. So it's like pull to go up, push to go down. And it's just not right. You want you want <coughs> down with the left hand, up with the right hand. But then again, this probably isn't a racing type car, is it? No, why have buttons? Who's that... gonna spend 200 grand on a 20 meter 7 Series and then want to shift manually. I would if I won the lottery. Yeah, yeah but definitely. I'd like it. Uh, so, anyway. Horrible gear selectors. Has got steering wheel controls, as you'd expect for 2008. Indicators in the normal position. Now, you do have... I don't know if you can see it there, but you've got two onboard control... onboard computer buttons. Um, and they control the bottom part of these screens. So, the bottom one basically shifts... Yeah, shifts through different menus down there. And then the one on the, up the top will shift this menu over. The sat nav on this is relatively well integrated, although you'd never use it because you've got Waze and Google Maps these days. Um, if you're looking at buying one of these, don't think you're ever gonna use the sat nav. However, if you do, not only does it come up on the main screen there, you actually also get arrow controls in the speedo dials, which I thought was pretty, it's a good level of integration. Do these clusters uh, drop pixels like the E39s? I don't know. This one doesn't. This one's perfect. That's all good. Yeah. Fuel consumption, I've just noticed. It's averaging around 13 to 14 litres per 100, which is about the same as my X5. Um, I reckon I'll probably drive this one a little bit more spiritedly than the X5, but fuel consumption is not, not brilliant. No M5. Um, comfort in the cabin is really, really nice. It's got wonderful cup holders that support your drinks really well. Uh, lots of cubby holes. You're saying there is buttons everywhere. So what have you got? I've just got... You could put your socks in there. I don't know. Yeah. Mahogany drawers. You do? Oh. And a phone dialer. Yeah, this car very, was equipped very, with a SIM card slot. So you can uh, do your trading on the move? Yeah. Cool. Well, I, have, I have bought a lot of Bitcoin 
No, I haven't. It's in penny stocks. If I had bought Bitcoin, I'd probably have a new set of incendiaries. Anyway. Um, has got cruise control, not radar though. Although I think radar was an option. Um, this car does Even not have it. Yeah, okay. you could get radar cruise back then, which was mega. Um, and so basically it's got all the main sort of modern con comforts that you want. It has got a sunroof. Good. And just the space in the back is insane. It is, that's a long way to the back seat. Yeah. So I'm just gonna touch on quickly, every single thing still works in this car. I've not had any problems with any of the electronic functions. And there are a lot of things to break. There are. Well, I guess, I don't know how people ruin their cars. Um, cool, should we see how it goes on the road? Yeah, let's take it for a drive. Let's do it. And one last sort of quirky thing about the, uh, the interior of this Generation 7 series. It's got the seat controls on the center console right here. They are vastly complex and compared to me having my all my other BMWs where you just twist each knob or move each knob, you have to select the section of the seat that you want to adjust and then you use that knob to move it to adjust it. But once you've had a play with it, much like the gear selector, it's quite intuitive and really easy to use. One last cool little feature on this classic 7 series is the boot opener. Let's go and have a quick look at that. So it is pushed to open. That's luxurious. It is, and it is a full mechanical system. The M5 that we've got, it uh, it will open like that, but it's on springs, and it's not it's not gracious. It goes whoopang and bounces around, but this is quite solid. A uh, humongous boot in the LIs. I assume the normal ones are the same. Um, you can literally get about four full-size suitcases in there. Full-size spare wheel. Thank God I haven't had to use it. And this is the first car I've ever owned that electronically shuts the boot. Why having a butler? I like it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's basically a quick rundown of all the features of this Generation 7 series. It's, it's not the newest thing in the world, but it's still pretty damn cool, and you do feel special when you're driving it. My only real complaint with it over the whole time is not having Bluetooth audio, but like I said, I fixed that with the FM modulator. We're pretty good. Can get my Stormzy cranking. Let's take it for a drive. Let's go. So, this... The thing that won me over when I first decided to buy it is just, it's literally how nice it is to drive. It's a WAF machine. It is. We were lucky enough to go on that roller in uh, England a couple of years ago, which was gangster. And this is the closest I've ever felt to being in a Rolls Royce. Yeah, it doesn't have the, in that Rolls, it was like, uh, it was an occasion, it was a bit flashy and everyone's looking at you. Yeah. But this, this is a similar ride and volume level and Everything, yeah. you just don't get all the, the hype. Couldn't agree more. Uh, so I just want to pinpoint. So this is essentially the same engine and gearbox that was in the X5, but the way it goes through the gears, and I'll just show you now, like it just shifts so smoothly. That was a shift. Mm. You just feel it from the passenger seat. Yeah. Just feel the power change. The way it brings the power in and out of the torque converter is just amazing. We'll go up through the gears again. That was it. It's crazy. And, and let's be real, this generation was released 18, 17 years ago. It's, yeah. it's still such a nice car. Uh, the steering feel on these, they're definitely not a race car, um, but who's racing the cars like this? Not me. Well, you do try a bit, but yeah, very, very light steering. And it's all about, this is going to sound really stupid, internet, and please tell me below what retard I am. The steering, it like it knows where it needs to be. So you come out of a corner, and you you'll put the input in to go around the corner, and then it, the way it self centers is just is really quite nice. And it takes effort out of driving. You feel pretty damn cool when you're riding in this thing. Yeah, it's just luxurious. It's it is, and for the money. So this was again touching on it again. This was twenty thousand dollars, which is it's less than a new Kia. Like, it's crazy money. Yeah, I I mean, at 200 grand, that's pretty serious. It's, yeah, it would be hard to pay that sort of money. But like, I paid 20 for this coming up a year ago. I'm probably gonna get close to 20 for it. Um, so I haven't really lost any depreciation. I've spent about $1,000 over maintaining it. That's doing oil changes before BMW recommend to do them. Like I said, I did spark plugs and a few other little bits when I was doing the water pump, but not big money. To own a car for that long that's this nice, it's 
the way to do it. It's I think not bad. Instead of people on YouTube scaring people out of buying these sort of cars, they need to be, make people aware that if you're a little bit DIY friendly, you can fix them, own them, maintain them, and really not lose much money. Now, so let's just finish this video off quickly. We've got to go and see how fast this is. What do you think it's going to do? It does actually feel kind of sprightly with, when you're up it. I think it's going to be quicker than the X5, which was, I think, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, that X5 was quick, actually. The, the X5 was the 4.4, but they were slightly heavier than these. Uh, but yeah, essentially the 4.4 version of this engine and the same gearbox going through a four-wheel drive system, which this doesn't have. Obviously, this is way more aerodynamic. I don't know if it comes into it under this sort of speed. Probably not at that speed, and I'd imagine it. I'd imagine this is going to have a tune to be to be smooth, smooth. and gentle, whereas the X5 not so much. Yeah, there's another thing. I'm a bit of a hoon, and I've not really beaten on this Hooned car. It. You just get in and drive it. It doesn't make you want a hoon. No. So it definitely must be giving you power and gears in a it's, calming manner. It's the type of car, when you're not listening to Stormzy and gangstering with your hand at 12 o'clock, you drive it at 20 to 8. That Your hands are down at the bottom and you really do relax. It's not the Hooney car. But the speed, the time, I'm going to guess, I'm going to say, I think it's going to be low 7, I think it's going to be quicker than the X5. Should we go find out? Let's go find out. Ready? But I was doing more, so it felt quicker. That's it. Well, not quite seven. No. No. <laughs> um, pretty consistent, all low to mid nines. Uh, can you remember the time? Was it 9.2, 9.3, nine? oh no, one was 10. The manual one was 10. 9.22, 9.66, and 10.02. And that was me trying to um, short shift to see if it'd be quicker, because it did rev out. This is a revy engine. I think that's why I had that perception of speed, because the times when you do overtake in traffic and you do floor it, it really does rev quite well. But it's off the line. It just doesn't it doesn't let you give the power, does it? No. No, you can't turn traction control off. That was that was as fast as this thing was gonna go. It was incredibly gentle and, and comfort during its hundred <laughs> zero to hundred run. So anyway, look, I really love this car. If you guys have gone through a similar thing where you've got 90% off your 7 Series, and let's face it, all over the world, it's a similar sort of depreciation situation. Uh, let me know what stories you've had. Have you had a good run, a bad run? Have you done a Hoovies garage and lost all your money on it? Man, I, I really like this car. I, it's yeah. definitely worth looking at. I'd be interested to in hear from people that, well, actually both, that have either bought what used to be incredibly expensive European vehicles and have had a good run with reliability and stuff and people that have also had these nightmare runs like everyone warns you about because it could just be a lot of fear mongering I think it's fear mongering BMW is the best cars in the world they never break it's all fun <laughs> I'll warrant your car just send me the bill alright thanks for watching everyone we'll see you in the next one <laughs>